I started photography in 1987. That's almost, this is my 30th year. So when I started photography, there were just four people in Kerala doing wildlife photography. And none of these four were professionals. In fact, I was the first professional photographer. I shoot endangered wildlife, um, flora, fauna, wild species. But if you ask me, the most endangered species in India is a professional wildlife photographer. And I shoot hotels, I shoot hospitals, I shoot for Kerala tourism. In fact, all the pictures that Kerala tourism used during the first 10 years, from 1992 onwards to the 2002, which brought millions of tourists to Kerala, were shot by me. <laughs> but that was a problem. I was, in fact, destroying nature with my pictures. I, I'm a crazy guy, you know, like I shoot nature and, and sell it to tourism, and these tourists come and destroy our land. So this is the reality I'm talking about. But before that, let's just to, just to understand things. What is nature photography? What is wildlife photography? If you look at the textbook, it says that it is a visual documentation of the endangered or otherwise flora, fauna, or animals living in their natural habitat. Right? But if you asked me, you need real skills. You have to be really fast. Because in nature photography, you cannot say, excuse me, eagle, can you just hold on? It doesn't happen. So you need real fast reflexes. But if you ask me really, I would tell nature photography is a training in the art of disappointment. Because you go to the, that beautiful landscape, the elephants are there, you wait for the moment, they turn the other side and walk away. It happens all the time. But in between, nature will give you these beautiful pictures. So these are the moments that the whole world, it's worth my whole life. It gives these beautiful moments. It's a spiritual experience for me. So that is the way I, I consider, I treat nature photography. In fact, I can happily go to the forest, spend one week and come back without any pictures. I don't have any complaints. But 2000 changed everything. Digital came. Now, everyone in this audience, I know, you are all photographers. Because you all have a camera on your mobile phone, right? So everyone is a photographer now. So it changed the whole lot of things, even in wildlife photography. So what happened to us? Hundreds and thousands of people have now taken a photography. They are hobbies, but very good hobbies, with very good equipment and beautiful skill. They make amazing pictures. But let me tell you one thing, the most important talent that a photographer requires, it is not your equipment. It doesn't mean whether you have this 600mm bazooka or a tiny camera. What is most important is that your ability to see the image. Your ability to dream about the image. That is the most important thing. If you can really dream about the image, then you can achieve those images. I'll give you just two examples. I, I was taking a small group of people to Masai Mara. And on the fourth day, we haven't seen a cheetah. And the driver suddenly said, sir, cheetahs are there, let's go. And within five minutes, he stopped the car and said, sir, take the picture of the cheetah. I said, where are the cheetah? Where are the cheetah? So look down, sir. So when he looked down, three feet away from the tire of the vehicle, this cheetah was lying down. I said, this is not my picture. I want to shoot the cheetah in its beautiful landscape. But the cheetah was lying here. But since I knew the behavior of the cheetah, I looked around, then I saw a big acacia tree which has fallen down, lying there. I said, take our vehicle there. So we took our vehicle, and I said, let us wait. Within two minutes, the cheetah got up, walked towards the tree, and climbed on top of the, of the tree. Now you see the difference between a picture. This is a picture. <laughs> so this is what I say, the power to dream. You must be able to dream, and everywhere you go, you need to find those pictures. The pictures are around you, all, over, all around you. But you have to isolate and locate and make the picture. This is what we saw in Lake Nakuru. It's a place where you have a million flamingos. But where is my picture? Then we search for them, search among these million birds, and you have to find a frame. That is what I did with my next picture. 
This is what we got. The why I am telling is that I am for me this talk is basically for the future generation of nature photographers. I want them to dream. Don't fall for the equipment. Don't ever fall for the equipment. Just dream and make pictures in your mind all the time. Now let's come to the digital era. Now there are hundreds, thousands of people who are shooting, and they are all traveling in beautiful safari vans. You go into Kabini, you go to other places, and and they are shooting. See, this is what happening now. You go to Kabini, you go to Bandavagat, then they, we have named out the tigers there. So where is Machli? The so Machli is that side. Okay, this is only Sher Khan. So and people are just just madly, madly following tigers, and the tigers also got hooked. Now, if you go to Kana or Kabini, and unless you take out your one DX Mark II and a 600 mm fitted onto it, the tiger will not look at it. Look at you. <laughs> it's a reality. So when all these things happened, one day something different happened. I was sitting with the tribal chief inside Peria Tiger Reserve, who knows me very well, and after. You know that inside the forest by 7:30 everything is over. It's pitch dark. So this tribal old chief asked me, "Balan sir, I know you. I knew your dad also. You have been coming here for a long time. You are making a lot of pictures, which got you a lot of awards, fame, everything. But let me ask you one thing: for all this greatness that nature has given you, what have you given back to nature? When you take from nature, and when you take again from nature, without giving anything in in return." Isn't that visual? That moment changed my life. Up to that moment, I was just madly trying to achieve things. It was just about me, my fame, my success. Why I'm telling is that the new generation of photographers, you are making great pictures, but you are posting it on Facebook, and you are getting this million likes, oh my jeez, wows, out of the worlds. What is that doing to nature? What is it giving back to nature? Nothing. So when I was going through this confrontation and pain, one fine morning, one lady knocked on my door and introduced it. Balan, my name is Christina Mitamia. I am the executive director of the International League of Conservation Photographers. I would like to welcome you to join our organization. That was the biggest honor I ever got in my life. Let me just show what is ILCP. Planet Earth is changing. Vital ecosystems are under threat. In an unprecedented move, the world's leading conservation photographers have united. Like a visual army, their images are fighting the battle of our threatened planet, bringing their passion, influence, and talents to the front lines. Together, we can inspire change. Together, we can make a difference, one image at a time. The International League of Conservation Photographers is a group of 60 people, 60 photographers. Except for me, every other one is a National Geographic photographer. But they took me into that league. What we do is very simple. The world is changing, and we don't have time. And there are so many people working for, for working to protect our planet Earth, and photography plays a major role. James Bellog, the great photographer who was chasing eyes for his whole life, told once, "A photographer in the field is the first witness to change." So we are the people in the field when working. We see the change. We see the climate change. We see what's happening to our rivers, what's happening to our our oceans. We see, and we don't have time. So instead of one photographer working on a detailed, long project, let us all come together, and we focus our multiple talents. There are underwater photographers. There are aerial photographers. So all of us come together and work on a specific target. 
and we produce result. Across the world, now conservation agencies, conservation uh, organizations are calling us to translate their research document into a visual movie. I'll just give an example. We all have problems on the Western Guards. Imagine tomorrow the Adarapalli project is going to come up. What will happen? A lot of forest area will be destroyed. So some research scholar will be doing a detailed documentary and finally he'll bring out this 800 page research report and give it to our chief minister. Sir, please read this. This has got all the information. Do you think he's going to read it? Okay, I'll read it. Isn't it? But if we can do that, we can translate that 800 page documentary, document into a 10 minute multimedia presentation. And we can show it to the world. This is what's going to happen. So the, the end of the day, my purpose is very simple. Use images for a purpose. That is the only difference between wildlife photography and conservation photography. You can just translate images and you can make people believe. When you shoot this, you also shoot this. This is very important because when you shoot the only show the beauty of nature, we are forget, forgetting the other side. When you show this one, you show the other side also. Thank you.